Welcome back. You're watching a special edition on South Africa's economic blueprint. And we're talking about uh, the political parties of South Africa and what they are doing to win the youth vote. And in the studio, we've got some young people here and we've been quizzing them about what they are trying to do in terms of their parties to advance youth interests. Can I ask you a trick question, gentlemen? You are all unrepresentative. There's no woman here. So your policies are skewed, including you who are supposed to represent the youth stronger than anybody else. Secondly, can each one, any one of you identify a particular policy that you pushed within your party to advance the interests of the youth? Anyone? Anyone? I think in the beginning we did mention that, number one, we assisted in, our, in the development of the education this is a policy public record, by the way. and in the economic inclusion policy as well. And we equally showed that we led the fight against the, uh, in fact, the implementation of the youth waste subsidy. Yeah. So this is on a public record. People have seen us demonstrate against these particular uh, policies. Was that yours? It's yours personally? It wasn't mine personally. But I it's want something one personally, someone who has personally contributed <laughs> a particular policy. I am looking for champions here. Because oh, you guys okay. are talking about uh, youth uh, participation and inclusion. Okay. But what you are pushing are policies that have been developed by 112 year old parties <laughs> and other 59 year olds and 70 year olds people. I want to know what you have met, what you have uh, suggested. Let me, let me, let me. Let, let's let me. begin with <laughs> you. We'll come to you. Okay. Let me quickly tell you a story of why I went into politics. I went into politics and my, my key thing was if we can go into politics and we start to empower young people, yeah. those young people, once they're empowered, once they know who they are as citizens of yeah. this country yeah. and what they're capable of, then it doesn't matter which party is in government. Sure. They will never allow this country to go in the direction that it has gone in. Okay. Do you have so I went in specifically, I went in specifically with that in mind. And so the education policy and how it addresses young people is something that I was part of pushing. The economic policy as well, and how it addresses young people. Now, yeah. I'm an entrepreneur, and so the, the, the policy, particularly in relation to entrepreneurship, yeah. is something that I was involved in. And okay. now, the, the last thing okay. is that one of the things that I kept pushing for, and I'm happy to have seen it, is that we can't develop policies that are silos, where the education policy is not speaking to the economic policy yeah, is not yeah, speaking yeah. to. So one of the things that I was consistently pushing for was an integrated policy proposal. Okay. And that is what our manifesto is. All of those things woven together okay. would lead to total youth imp empowerment. OK, you surprised me there. Yes. <laughs> um, the African National Congress appreciates that people of this country were oppressed as a group, as a race. True. And therefore, how we respond uh, to the development of this country must take that into account. Okay. And therefore, all our personal views, our policy positions, are infused in a collective outcome of the organization. And therefore, this manifesto, all of us, including it's myself, we participated in the process of formulating. But more importantly, is that we appreciate that uh, African people uh, African general and blacks in particular, yeah. and pe all people in South Africa must live a better life, and all of us must contribute towards that. Okay, he's out my yeah, no, <laughs> that's, that that's what we call fancy footwork. That's <laughs> what we call fancy <laughs> footwork. Let's move on. that it's a compromise, <laughs> that there co is a compromise. Do you want to add something quickly? Or? No, I don't think what you're doing is right to, to individuate policy contributions. Mm. I don't want to blow my own. But did you hear my point? Mm -hmm. Yes, you're asking is us what is the personal contribution. Be, be, uh, at the front uh, of trying yeah, to the, the, develop the entire policy. And let me tell you why I'm asking the police in addition to that. My own view is that the best way of empowering the youth is to give them an education. Nothing beats that. Even if, you gave <coughs> a, if I gave you a million rand today, two years down the line or more, we may find you've got nothing of that money left, unless you have been educated in order to be able to look after that money. So my approach is education, which yeah. comes back to you guys. Why has the ANC failed to provide a free education Before you up to university? Before I agree with you. Please. Thanks. As we stand now, uh, just on the schooling, 80% are no free schools. And those no fee schools... I want 100%. I don't yes. want 80%. Yes. No, those no fee schools appreciate the fact that you've got to ensure that those who can't afford those who come from poor families are given those opportunities. In the universities, yes. that's the method that has been applied. Because in this instance, those who can be able to make a contribution towards education, 
those must make such contributions. No, but what about inclusiveness? I don't get the, this. The, the, the I don't get this. You, you are actually dividing people here. Not Instead of simply saying, I am looking at a child there, and I'm looking at a child there, and I'm looking at a child there, I will not discriminate. Get all those kids into school because then tomorrow they will be able to work better. But I digress the ANC because we need to get the audience involved. On debt. And, yeah? The ANC teaches black people, uh, because most black people can't afford, on debt. Uh, NFSAS that is talking about is actually a loan. Yeah. It's not free. Mm. It's not free to be educated in South Africa, particularly quality. It teaches education. responsibility as well. Now, no, no, no. I don't believe no. so. I think that what is that? What we are saying is that we'll provide free quality education until the attainment of first degree. We'll take our people to the best universities as well. We'll distribute free scholarships. To we'll take. Ex in ex 10,000 students every year to the best universities across the world, particularly in scarce skills. Moisen, I heard a big roar from the audience when you mentioned that, so I'm quite sure they want to get into that. But before we go to that, a quick comment uh, coming from you, Timothy. In Congress of the People, when you went to the Youth Congress, I made sure what I was chairing the education uh, policy uh, discussion. The point is we want to make sure, Guti, as I said earlier, education must go hand in hand with skills development. If you remember previously, we were doing agriculture in schools, but most of the schools now, they're no longer doing agriculture. And that's why we neglect our rural areas and want to come and fill up the cities. As COPE, we want, we want to make sure we, uh, young people from primary, before you move to secondary, to high school, to tertiary, you are skilled, equipped. Just to, a quick response to this in German NEFSA. I, I, was a, I was a NEFSA student. NEFSA is a loan when you continuously pass with 50 to 60 percent but when you excel that things become a buzzer you don't repay that nefsa back i wanted to correct that i am a nefsa student from unis i'm I also a nefsa student and it it's works so on a percentile so it doesn't come come become completely free i've been there too so let's listen it's not true it's not true it's not true as, 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 as i said it's not true if, personal if experience you pass, not if true. you continue passing it's not true 60 percent you will pay it back because uh, you're not excelling okay, i didn't pay my next we will take this in as fast conversation and yeah. now it will take, take you with okay we 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 yeah. Yeah. we'll take yeah. you with and we'll have this discussion because maybe in as fast owes me but some money I'm an so gentlemen let's do this let's uh open this discussion to the floor now and the, and the way we're going to do this we're going i'm going to take uh, three questions and for the audience so what you do is yet you, uh, you stand up and you indicate who you you you're posing your question to. We'll take three questions <coughs> and we'll allow our panelists to answer those questions. All right. So let's start off. Uh, any questions? So we start off with the gentleman in the front, gentleman at the back, and let's not all have DA hands and let's have an EFF voice. So let's start off with you. If you stand, yes, yes, please, and then say who you are and what who you posing your question to. Oh yeah. Um, my name is Floyd. I'm posing my question to the ANC gentleman. Actually, I can hear all of you. You are lying about NS first. Yeah. Say. Um, I'm a postgraduate currently registered now. I'm asking for the NFA students who were actually excluded early this year from universities because there were lack of funding. How are you planning to compensate them? Because now I can hear you saying you have skills and all that, but now we have students this year, two months ago, who were excluded because there were no funding from the government. All right, let's take an EFF voice before we go back to another DA voice. Um, my question goes to Mr. DA there. <laughs> what I'd like to know, I heard, I heard um, the DA leader talking about um, people, the government not being able to take charge of the economy. But when you talk about the government, we're talking about ordinary citizens, you and me and everybody else. Now, is he trying to say that we as South Africans cannot run our own economy? and we need to depend on other people to come and run the economy for us. Can we just, if you can get clarity on that, please. Let's get a final comment uh, from the floor. There's a voice at the back. Uh, my name is Mpoba Bella, and one question I would like to pose to the ANC. He spoke about fancy stuff, like the EPW jobs. I yeah, said young youngsters should actually be involved in EPW jobs. Uh, for my understanding, EPW jobs are not jobs. They are job alleviations for people who are very extremely affected by poverty. Those are EPW jobs. And he spoke about nine billion. This is very fancy. We want to see that nine billion. Why is it? Because there's been students who actually were chased out of university because NAFSA didn't cater. Only the, the added two billion addition. Uh, to my understanding, I was in the South Committee. There's no nine billion that you're talking of. Can you please clarify? So the questions are there. Yeah, indeed. And I just wanted to clarify for, for our audience. We want policy 
directed questions because obviously specific things you, they might not be able to to have the uh, specific detail of it but the uh, floor thanks. is open thanks a lot just on as far as i think uh, all of us must uh, accept the enormous contribution that uh, NSFAS have made into ensuring that in the main uh, students from poor families whom by large are blacks are today having qualified Welcome back. You're watching a special edition on South Africa's economic blueprint, and we're talking about uh, the political parties of South Africa and what they are doing to win the youth vote. And in the studio, we've got some young people here, and we've been quizzing them about what they are trying to do in terms of their parties to advance youth interests. Can I ask you a trick question, gentlemen? You are all unrepresented. There's no woman here. So your policies are skewed, including you, who are supposed to represent the youth stronger than anybody else. Secondly, can each one, any one of you identify a particular policy that you pushed within your party to advance the interests of the youth? Anyone? Anyone? I think in the beginning we did mention that, number one, we assisted in, our, in the development of the education this is a policy public record, by the way. and in the economic inclusion policy as well. And we equally showed that we led the fight against the, uh, in fact, the implementation of the youth waste subsidy. Yeah. So this is on a public record. People have seen us demonstrate against these particular uh, policies. Was that yours? It's yours personally? It wasn't mine personally. But I it's want one you personally, someone who has personally contributed <laughs> a particular policy. Well, I am looking for champions here. Because oh, you guys okay. are talking about uh, youth uh, participation and inclusion. Okay. But what you are pushing are policies that have been developed by 112-year-old parties <laughs> and other 59-year-olds and 70-year-olds people. I want to know what you have met, what you have uh, suggested. Let me, let me, let me, let, let let's me. begin with <laughs> you. We'll come to you. Okay. Let me quickly tell you a story of why I went into politics. I went into politics and my, my key thing was if we can go into politics and we start to empower young people, yeah. those young people, once they're empowered, once they know who they are as citizens of yeah. this country yeah. and what they're capable of, then it doesn't matter which party is in government. Sure. They will never allow this country to go in the direction that it has gone in. Okay. Do you have so I went in specifically I went in specifically with that in mind. And so the education policy and how it addresses young people is something that I was part of pushing. The economic policy as well, and how it addresses young people. Now, yeah. I'm an entrepreneur, and so the, the, the policy, particularly in relation to entrepreneurship, yeah. is something that I was involved in. And okay. now, the, the last thing okay. is that one of the things that I kept pushing for, and I'm happy to have seen it, is that we can't develop policies that are silos, where the education policy is not speaking to the economic policy yeah, is not yeah, speaking yeah. to. So one of the things that I was consistently pushing for was an integrated policy proposal. Okay. And that is what our manifesto is. All of those things woven together okay. would lead to total youth empowerment. Okay, you surprised me there. Yes, <coughs> um, the African National Congress appreciates that people of this country were oppressed as a group, as a race. True. And therefore, how we respond uh, to the development of this country must take that into account. Okay. And therefore, all our personal views, our policy positions, are infused in a collective outcome of the organization. And therefore, this manifesto, all of us, including it's myself, we participated in the process of formulating. But more importantly, is that we appreciate that uh, African people uh, African children and blacks in particular, yeah. and pe all people in South Africa must live a better life, and all of us must contribute towards that. Okay, he's out Yeah, <laughs> no, that's, that's what we call fancy footwork. That's <laughs> what we call fancy <laughs> footwork. Let's move on. that is a compromise. <laughs> that is a compromise. Do you want to add something quickly? Or no, I don't think what you are doing is right to to individuate policy contributions. Mm. I don't want to blow my own. But did you hear my point? Mm -hmm. Yes, my you're asking is us what is the personal contribution. Be, be, uh, at the front uh, of trying yeah, to the, the, develop the entire policy. And let me tell you why I'm asking the policy in addition to that. My own view is that the best way of empowering the youth is to give them an education. Nothing beats that. Even if, you gave <coughs> a, if I gave you a million rand today, two years down the line or more, we may find you've got nothing of that money left, unless you've been educated in order to be able to look after that money. 
So my approach is education, which have comes back to you guys. Why has the ANC failed to provide a free education Before you go, up to university? I agree with him. Please. Thanks. As we stand now, uh, just on the schooling, 80% are no fee schools. And those no fee schools. I want 100%. I don't yes. want 80%. Yes. No, those no fee schools appreciate the fact that you've got to ensure that those who can't afford, those who come from poor families, are given those opportunities. In the universities, that's the method that has been applied. Because in this instance, those who can be able to make a contribution towards education, those must make such contributions. No, but what about inclusiveness? I don't get the, this. The, the, the ANC, I don't get this. You, you the, are actually dividing people here. Not Instead not of simply saying, I am looking at a child there, and I'm looking at a child there, and I'm looking at a child there, I will not discriminate. Get all those kids into school because then tomorrow they will be able to work better. But I digress. The ANC because is we need teaching to get the most of us on debt. Uh, yeah? The ANC teaches black people, uh, because most black people can't afford, on debt. Uh, NFSAS that is talking about is actually a loan. Yeah. It's not free. Mm. It's not free to be educated in South Africa, particularly quality. It teaches education. responsibility as well. Now, no, 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 I don't believe no. so. I think that what, is that what we are saying is that we'll provide free quality education until the attainment of first degree. We'll take our people to the best universities as well. We'll distribute free scholarships. To, we'll take ex, in ex 10,000 students every year to the best universities across the world, particularly in scarce skills. Mboisen, I had a big roar from the audience when you mentioned that, so I'm quite sure they want to get into that. But before we go to the, a quick comment uh, coming from you, Timothy. In Congress of the People, when you went to the Youth Congress, I made sure what I was chairing the education uh, policy uh, discussion. The point is we want to make sure, what, as I said earlier, education must go hand in hand with skills development. If you remember previously, we were doing agriculture in schools, but most of the schools now, they're no longer doing agriculture. And that's why we neglect our rural areas and want to come and fill up the cities. As COPE, we want, we want to make sure we, uh, young people from primary, before you move to secondary, to high school, to tertiary, you are skilled, equipped. Just to, a quick response to this in German NEFSA. I was a, a NEFSA student. NEFSA is a loan when you continuously pass with 50 to 60 percent but when you excel that things become a buzzer you don't repay that nefsa back i wanted to correct that i am a nefsa student from unis i'm I also a nefsa student and it it's works so on a percentile so it doesn't come come become completely free i've been there too so let's <laughs> listen it's not true it's not true it's as, not true as, as, as i said it's not true if, if, personal if experience you pass, it's not if true. you continue with passing it's not true 60 percent you will pay it back because uh, you're not excelling okay, i will pay my nefsa we will take this we'll nfs fast conversation and <laughs> now yeah. we'll take, take you with okay we'll take you with and we'll have this discussion because maybe <laughs> NSF owes me but some money. Nice, so, student. gentlemen, let's do this. Let's uh, open this discussion to the floor now. And the, and the way we're going to do this, we're gonna, I'm going to take uh, three questions. And for the audience, so what you do is yet, uh, you stand up and you indicate who you're, you, you're posing your question to. We'll take three questions <coughs> and we'll allow our panelists to answer those questions. All right. So let's start off. Uh, any questions? So we start off with the gentleman in the front, gentleman at the back. And let's not all have DA hands and let's have an EFF voice. So let's start off with you. If you stand, yes, yes, please. And then say who you are and what, who you're posing your question to. Oh yeah, um, my name is Floyd. I'm posing my question to the ANC gentleman. Actually, I can hear all of you are lying about NSFAS. Yeah. Say, um, I'm a postgraduate currently registered. Now I'm asking for the NSFAS student who were actually excluded early this year from universities because there were lack of funding. How are you planning to compensate them? Because now I can hear you saying you have skills and all that, but now we have students this year, two months ago, who were excluded because there were no funding from the government. All right, let's take an EFF voice before we go back to another DA voice. Um, my question goes to Mr. DA there. <laughs> what I'd like to know, I heard, I heard um, the DA leader talking about um, people, that the government not being able to take charge of the economy. But when you talk about the government, we're talking about ordinary citizens, you and me and everybody else. Now, is he trying to say that we as South Africans cannot run our own economy and we need to depend on other people to come and run the economy for us? Can we just, if you can get clarity on that, please. Let's get a final comment uh, from the floor. There's a voice at the back. 
Uh, my name is Mpoba Bella, and one question I'd like to pose to the ANC. He spoke about fancy stuff, like the EPW jobs. I yeah, said young youngsters should actually be involved in EPW jobs. Uh, from my understanding, EPW jobs are not jobs. They are job alleviations for people who are very extremely affected by poverty. Those are EPW jobs. And he spoke about 9 billion. This is very fancy. We want to see that 9 billion. Why is it? Because there's been students who actually were chased out of university because NAFSA didn't cater. Only the, they added a 2 billion addition. Uh, to my understanding, I was in the South Committee. There's no nine billion that you're talking of. Can you please clarify? So the questions are there. Yeah, indeed. And I just wanted to clarify for, for our audience, we want policy directed questions because obviously specific things, they might not be able to, to have the uh, specific detail of it, but the uh, floor is open. Thanks a lot. Just on as far as I think uh, all of us must uh, accept the enormous contribution that uh, NSFAS have made into ensuring that in the main, uh, students from poor families, whom by large are blacks, are today having qualifications, are today having jobs, are today uh, having masters, postgrads, and all those things. I think we must make that, because without that NSFAS, many of us, they will not uh, even be able to construct a sentence in English, let alone be employed. Uh, sure. uh, and I think that's important. Oh, 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 the oh, second oh. part, <laughs> or let's say me, because I studied in this first till my, uh, uh, was funded by government and all subsidies till my masters I have now. So let me speak about myself. Oh. Now, the issue I have then is that the, we, we can't <coughs> want to uh, underscore that contribution of NSFAS. Now, I'm saying in 2008, NSFAS was at 3.1 billion, now it's at 9 to ensure that because the demand of students uh, in ensuring that they, they attain qualification is increasing, therefore the investment of government in that sector have got to increase. It is true that in the beginning of the year, there were issues of students who have not been funded, who went to strike. And SASCO and Youth League were leading the protest across this country because in all these SRC students have voted us to be in power. And therefore, that's why that even at that time intervention was made. Would you not go and sit in the minister's office where they engage and find a solution because we are the youth that cares and the youth that contributes in the policy positions and decisions in this country. And therefore, we can never want to, and let for that matter, it says when you pass your, now as you speak, if in your last year you have passed well, that is converted into a bazaar because it is important that we must invest more money in ensuring that more people are actually educated. Let's, let's get you uh, um, addressing the second part of the question, which was EPWP, saying that these are what, fancy jobs? We're not looking for, for fancy words, we're looking for real jobs. The mayor of uh, uh, Cape Town, go and read what he says about external public works program. She says this is a singular uh, uh, aspect that is very proud about in Cape Town. So this must not be made as if it's happening not in everywhere else and not in Cape Town. By the way, extended public works program opportunities ensure that these young people who are in rural areas, who are in township, who are not at school, who are not employed, get opportunity to be skilled, get an opportunity to earn a living. And therefore, they've got an experience, and therefore, they're employable in a much more sustainable job. Is that jobs. job creation or is that uh, short-term poverty alleviation? There are categories of external public program. There are young people who have been there much more, but there are young people who now, as a product of external public program, they've got a skill, they've got an experience, they've got a... Uh, and do they have a sustainable living. job? As I'm saying, okay, let me, let like me, any let other jobs, <laughs> there right. are categories of jobs. There are people, as we speak today, who are actually on uh, 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 casuals, who are on long term, who are on contracts. Mawet, I and want you to be able to take one more question. There are categories so I'm of how jobs you, are. Right? I'm going to cut you and I'm going to come back to Bongani. You have a case to answer to, um, I, I, I believe, based on the floor. Yes. Um, the, I must first clarify when people elect a government, they elect a government that will also preside over an economy. So when someone comes and criticizes the government of the day with, in relation to their role of presiding over an economy, it's not necessarily uh, laying the criticism to the people that elected the government. So we must make the clear distinction first. So, so my point is when the, the party of, of a democratic alliance, the leader of the Helen Zeller, our leader, when she criticized the current government of not presiding over an economy properly, that's a, a, that, that's a just criticism and not level to the people, but to the government. Right. And we're saying we could pro provide better oversight and preside better over an economy to create jobs for, for our people. 
That's in fact, our debate for the next right. 10 years. That's Does right. nobody want okay. to grill the EFF for coal? I think address the other issue. Correct. There's an issue that's also I would like to, to address Okay, you, you, you're eating away at your own time, so let's park it for now. Um, let's, let's just come back to Mbwisheni very quickly. 30 seconds. Uh, I, I didn't get any, any, any question, but I think that uh, we, must, we must insist that the South African state um, needs to be able to lead in the economy. We don't believe to preside, to be class monitors mm -hmm. in the economy. We want to be, want to be involved. Where, uh, uh, many governments in the world, I mean, how did Lula take out Brazil out of some of the largest inequalities in the world? They provided two things, high wages, they set up a minimum wage. Number two, they provided social grants. And that provided enough money in the economy in order for there to be more opportunities. And that's precisely what the economic film fighter is. Take a the history minutes. lesson from me. <laughs> one day I'll We've got less than five lesson. minutes. There are some people who are jumping around who are just Quick question. <laughs> uh, please, let's, let, let's give the gentleman behind you and then we'll give you an opportunity. Okay. May I ask in, um, from the opposition parties, how do they intend? if they are opposing my way to on EPWP and other small scale projects that government and the public works opposition are implementing. Where? Nationally, provincial? No, no, um, in government. I mean, these are political parties, not opposition. So um, we want to know if, um, if, if you, are, you, you happen to win, what, how will you help young people get exposure to work? Because that's one challenge that young people face after um, finishing their degrees or, or All right. certificates. So let's take the quick question in the front. Uh, my question goes direct uh, uh, to ANC. Thanks, I you. will say to ANC because uh, 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 I will name ANC because uh, the ANC is owning us. It's claiming that it's owning us. Now my question says, my brother, how can you say EPWP is killing young people as well? The EPWP is misleading young people. You can't tell me that you are killing me by giving me an, a, 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 something to sweep the, the road. While you are telling me to go and do the garden, what are you telling me? Huh? What, what are you saying? Hence that EPWP, the application form uh, uh, is ANC membership card. And once again, final. Uh, uh, yes, yes, it, it, it's final. <laughs> uh, please, <laughs> don't mislead young people on the national TV saying EPWP is killing young people. Hence, EPWP is stealing from the poor. Okay, on that note, any more questions from the floor? We've got a final... I think we've actually run out of time. Very we've got a very, very quick one. Very, very quick one from um, the gentleman there. Very quickly. Okay, my name is Gadi. So, sometime this year I went uh, to NYTA and I wanted funds. And then they told me that I should have a membership of a membership card of ANC. Okay, that's a, wow, that's, that's, a, that's a very powerful question, as brief as it is. Okay. Um, my name is Ayanda. I'd just like to know, um, directed at education, I understand that your policies are mostly aimed at being quantitative. How are you making it more, like, be deeper? How is the quality uh, improved? Because um, the foundation is really, as a young teacher, I'm a teacher, I teach in high school, and the quality of education in South Africa is actually very poor. We've got less than two minutes of the show to go, so let's get very quick rebuttals. I mean, Mawet, you've got a lot of things, EPW, EPWP and NYDA, in 20 seconds, if you can. Okay. Well, uh, on the Public Works Program, uh, it's just to sound revolutionary here. Everyone knows the Public Works Program employs all young people uh, who oh, actually no, apply. <laughs> go, go ahead, 20 seconds. Am I protected now? You are protected. <laughs> Th thanks a lot. I, I, I feel it. I feel very <laughs> threatened. The, the external wo public works program employs young people whom otherwise they would not have received the opportunity to expose to work, to receive experience, and therefore it's making a contribution, and that contribution must be recognized. There NYDA, no a membership card for the ANC. Yeah, uh, those who are doing that, they, they must be uh, reported to nearest police station, be arrested. Okay. NYDA, as we speak now, has been. 2.7 billion on uh, uh, NITA, <coughs> on IDC, on other FDIs have ensured that young people receive 
uh, opportunities to start their business, uh, to get uh, capacity and all those things. Therefore, okay. they've been real work done but by MID. But we're out of time. So we're taking quick final comments. All I want you to do is if tomorrow was the 8th of May, the headline, what's the newspapers going to be saying? Let's start off with Ibungan. Free campaigning platform. DA takes Gauteng. DA takes Gauteng. Economic freedom fighters. E economic free freedom fighters inaugurate a new economic freedom for Africa. Manda. All right. An alternative government is there for Repeat the people. Repeat that again. An alternative government a and implementing government is there for the people. Congress That's of the people. That's a long headline. Okay, but <laughs> it's an alternative government. And uh, Rory San. The citizens are once again in power. The citizens are once again in power. Mawetu. South Africans has once more affirmed their party. Absolutely, that's our program today. Thank you very much all for watching. I'm certainly hoping that you enjoyed it. I wanted to develop just three things here by this debate. I wanted us, first of all, to understand the political party's approach to the youth. And then secondly, I also wanted to understand how personally uh, the young people that we have in the studio here uh, today approach uh, youth uh, policy. And then lastly, I also wanted to understand how the parties themselves actually involve the youth in their economic policy formulation. I think I've got some very nice answers here. And thank you all for watching. And uh, well, let's see. May 7 is here. 25 million South Africans are going to go for it. We'll have the final numbers in there. That's right. it for the special youth debate on South Africa's economic blueprint. Thank you again for joining us. And don't forget to follow me at Nozi Pumbanjo or Godfrey at G Mutizwa. And of course, at CNBC Africa, keeping in touch with all the conversations that continue to shape and define the African economy. Thank you for joining us.